Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. This is lesson 10 and let's get started with our lesson. For this week and the rules of the game, we are going to talk about over and back and what that looks like. So I tried to draw it. Hopefully you can see it. So let's say I get scored on. My team gets scored on. So I get the ball. I'm dribbling. I'm dribbling. Once I pass half line, I need to say, stay on this side of the court because if the ball rolls back or if I'm dribbling and then I step back, then that's considered over and back. Why? Because I went over the line and then I went back. So that's an over and back. So once we cross the line, we stay on that side. So if I'm going this way, once I cross the line, I stay on this side. So this drill that we're going to cover is an exercise to help you work on your different types of passing. And this drill is called the wall pass. So in this, I'm going to more so explain it rather than demonstrate it because we don't have like a brick or a solid concrete wall to use. And it's not really practical or good to throw the ball off of like dirty or dry wall. So if you can try and find a brick wall or a concrete so with this, you're essentially just going to practice a different type of pass. The overhead pass, bounce pass, baseball pass. With both all of the baseball pass are doing with both hands, which is behind the back pass. If you want to do that, um, give yourself a number. So 30 passes for each hand successfully. Um, see, or you can time yourself to see how many accurate passes you can get in a single minute. Um, you can tinker around with both the, the number of passes in between and uh, the time. But you see here, it's practice takes a second each to make sure that you get accurate. So you can, you can also tinker around with the, the weight of the pass, which is also how much force you're putting into it. So obviously, when you go up to the more velocity, it'll get into, um, it'll get towards your target quicker. Sometimes you don't always have to pass as hard. But you do want to practice being able to do that. So there you have it, that's the wall pass. So this drill is called the wall shooting. And it's going to be more ideal for your practice on an actual basket. But if you don't have a basket, this drill helps with simulating um, side spin. And when you shoot the ball, you will need back spin, but it has to be back spin that pretty much efficient back spin where it's only back spin and no other types of spin, it's just mostly side spin and top spin. You don't want to have any type of side spin or top spin when you shoot the ball. Um, so with this drill, you can you can adjust your distance from where you are in relation to the wall. You want to pick a target on the wall, you can maybe mark it across. It's going to be difficult if you don't want that target to be 10 feet high. Um, if you have a ladder or something like that, that would be possible, but um, that won't be quite necessary. You can probably just eyeball that set, set that to a 10 feet spot on the wall. And if you want to stand directly um, straight on with the wall, you don't want to be at an angle. You want to be pretty straight on. And you want to have your feet in your stance in a good position. So right now I'm facing the wall um, straight on. But if I was standing at the seam on the wall, I would face it. Point straight, bounce into the position, uh, my grip is pressed, I have my index finger gripping on the corner of the hoop or the basketball. My off hand is short, I'll just be low, the same position, and when I raise up to shoot, after the release, I'll shoot the ball in to the target. So you want to practice that um, using a wall, and if you get direct backspin, ball and hit your target, the ball should come directly back, right back to you without you having to move or even stretch out your arm. If you start to experience, um, this will give you feedback right away if you're getting back. So go ahead and try out that drill and see how it works. Right now we're going to talk about, it's a change of direction move where you're faking one change of direction and going the other way. It's called the inside out dribble. In the inside out dribble, it's 
I'm going to perform this with my dominant hand, but essentially, I, it looks as if I'm pushing the ball across my body into the other hand, or just pushing it out into space and push the ball to me across my body. So essentially, I'll be moving to my left, if I push the ball within my right hand. So I'll perform some examples. It's going to be, is this, I'm going to the left, but I'm going to pull the ball back and go right. This is the key here, is to make sure that your hand is on, on the top of the ball and not on the bottom. You can kind of do the side to manipulate the ball, but just make sure that it doesn't look like you're underneath the ball, then that's considered a carry in the It looks like this, standing still. rebounding we are going to learn about a step back rebounding and what that looks like so what it would look like is let's pretend you are guarding me you would turn around box me out and I would get as close as possible as I could to you so that you would feel me. And as soon as you turn around to box me out, I would step back, go around you, and get the rebound. So, well, again, let's say I was a defender. So I would feel you. I would box you out. And then you would step back, come around me, and get the rebound. That's what a step back rebound looks like. All right. So now we're going to be talking about some post moves, and this move is called the baseline crossover hook. So we're going to be, the setup will be the same as how we had it in our last baseline um, power move. So I'll be posting up here with a defender on my back. I'll catch the ball, keeping it away from the defender. I'll turn and face. I'll wait up the three. And this is when the defender Here we'll be talking about a book breakdown called The Stretching Trap. And it it goes along with the continuation of our of what we talked about with the pick and roll options. So here we got the ball handler and the screener. The ball handler and the, sc the screener sets the screen and the two defenders are pretty much sandwiching and blowing it up. In the, in in other words, that just means that they're really they're filling the space and they're making it really hard and uncomfortable for the ball handler and making it very very tight and congested. So with this an experienced ball handler will read the, the situation and read the defense, and he'll take two retreat dribbles, which we talked about. So he'll take two retreat, retreat dribbles backwards to create space, and the screener will leak out into the open space in behind toward the basket. And so with the two defenders pretty much crowding the space of the ball handler, the ball handler will throw the ball over with an overhead pass and lob it over to the screener and the screener has space to shoot for an opportunity to score. Let's talk about some tricks you could do when you're playing defense. So if I have the ball and you're playing defense on me, some things to keep in mind is you want to force me to my weak hand or my weak side. So for example, my dominant hand would be my right hand. So I'm right-handed. I would dribble with my right 
So you would position yourself to where you would force me to go to my left. That way I would have to dribble with my left. And that would cause me to maybe make a mistake or lose control of the ball. And then you would, could tap in, get it, and then counterattack. Or you would want to push me towards the sideline and keep me away from the middle. Because once I'm in the middle, I have lots of options. But if you close me down and shuffle and push me over to the sideline, then the sideline is like an extra defender. Those are two things you could do when you are playing defense on someone that has the ball in their hand. Here we'll be talking about lane defensive big check. So you can pick, pick which key that you want to start with. I'm going to be starting right here at this right key, right over here. Or you can, vice versa, you can start at this left key. So it will always be facing half court. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to start on the right key. My right, my top foot will be my right hand. And my back foot will be my left hand. So I'm going to have my hand in a, in a, in a low athletic position with my hand is out. I'll zigzag. So one, so one, two, three, and end up that back corner. Sprint along this line on the blue line and get to the left. And I'll do vice versa. So I'll do a couple of those. So, and with this, once you start thinking of it, this will be used for defensive footwork and position. So you want to see how many, how many you can do in a certain set amount of time. So 20 seconds and 30 seconds. Start off with what you can do in a simple, relaxed, uncomfortable pace, and count how many you can do. So, for example, this one will be one. So, right here. Whatever your outside, what leg, what line you're on, whether it's the right side or the left side, whatever foot is closest to that line, in terms of like so I'm on the left side, my left foot is facing the top foot. And then I'll switch once I get to that line. Right foot touches the line, I drop my left foot. Cut my right foot. For this week's mental aspect, we are going to talk about a situation when you go, if you go up to talk to a ref, how you would approach them. So first of all, we got to make sure that we are super respectful and calm when we go up to them. Now, if it's about a call that you don't agree with, I would wait for the call to be over and maybe once it's a uh, halftime or a uh, timeout, you could go up to the ref respectfully, say what you thought, what you saw, and then so that ref can keep an eye out for a certain player or for a situation that might happen later on in the game. So I would not raise my voice at them. I would not say, you did this. And I would try and be as calm as possible so the ref knows that I'm being respectful. And they, later on in the game, will most likely mark that call because I came up to them in a respectful way.